Eichmann's defense, along with other Nazis, for sending millions of people to their deaths was that he was simply following the orders of his superiors. But the question got Milgram to thinking, what might the average person be capable of when under orders? This machine, which seems to give electroshocks to a man on the other side of the wall. As you move up the scale, he begins to scream out in pain. The experiment requires that you continue. The experimenter pressures you to go on. Would you agree to continue? <laughs> Dr. Stanley Milgram came up with this experiment to test whether people would blindly follow the orders of an authority figure. He found that two-thirds of his subjects were willing to give the most dangerous shock on the machine. Wrong. 90 volts. The typical response is to turn toward the experimenter and if not say something, at least give a look that says, what should I do? 39-year-old Troy Shasker is an electrician. He's been paid $50 to participate and told that the money is his to keep even if he quits the experiment early. He's worried about the dangers of the electroshock machine. Wow. That's, I, don't think, I, I, don't, I don't think I should shock him that hard if he really does screw up. That's been a severe shock there. Yeah, there are 25. Now I could just go get my shotgun. There are 20. <laughs> In the room next door, Troy watches as the learner gets strapped into his chair and really gets nervous once he hears him say this. I should probably bring up a couple of years ago at Kaiser they diagnosed a, a mild heart condition. I'm really not too worried about it. It's not that serious. But Well, you should know that while the um, shocks that we'll be using today may be painful, they're not dangerous. Okay. Milgram intended that scripted exchange to set up a conflict in the subject's mind, a choice between the health of the learner and the authority of the experimenter. At 75 volts, Troy hears the first sign of trouble. Incorrect. 75 volts. Ah! I could actually hear him next door going, ow, oh, and he kept getting things wrong. Incorrect. 90 volts. At 105 volts, he's clearly uneasy. I got a little moist on my forehead there. I, I wasn't comfortable. Mm -hmm. I do not. I can't tell you why. I, why I listened to him and kept going. I should have just said no. At 150 volts. Incorrect. 150 volts. Ah, that's all. Will Troy listen as the learner begs him to stop, or will he follow Brian's orders? Tell him the correct word, pair of white. The, the correct word was white horse. And the next item, please continue. The next item is sad. He obeys the orders. Face. Why didn't you stop? I was just doing my job. <laughs> I was doing what I was supposed to do. 75 volts. So I, I guess the influence of having the, the conductor of the experiment right there next to me telling me to keep going had a lot to do with it. 50% of the subjects obey the experimenter's commands fully in the experiment depicted in this film. I'm at 65 volts. Time. Continue, please. Go on. There's a lot of them here. You know, you have a heart condition there. You want me to go? Just continue, please. Sharp. Axe, needle, stick, blade. That's what. Wrong. Nice. I'm up to 180 volts. Please continue, teacher. Needle, you're going to get a shot. 180 volts. Oh. I can't stand the pain. Let me out of here. can't stand it. I'm not going to kill that man, eh? You hear him hollering these days? I said before, the shocks may be painful, but yeah, they're not dangerous. They're hollering, he can't stand it. What if something happens to him? The experiment requires that you continue, teacher. Yeah, but uh, I'm not going to get that man sick of that. I mean, he's hollering in there. You know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> he's Whether the learner likes it or not, we must go on until he's well, learned I mean, all the uh, words. I would refuse to take the responsibility of getting hurt in there. I mean, I'm not, I mean he's under hollering. It's absolutely essential that you continue, teacher. There's too many left here. I mean, geez, he, go, he gets wrong here. There's too many of them left. I mean, who's going to take the responsibility if anything happens to that gentleman? I'm responsible for anything that happens here. Continue, please. 
All right, next one, slow. Wrong. Answer is neck. 300 volts. Continue. The next word is green, please. Green, grass, hat, ink, apple. I can't find one answer. If the learner doesn't answer in a reasonable time, about four or five seconds, consider the answer wrong and follow the same procedures you have been doing for wrong answers. Say wrong, tell them the number of votes, give them the punishment, read them the correct answer. Oh, man. Continue, please. Something's happened to that man there. Nice one. Gold, dollar, necklace, moon, paint. Something's happened to that man in there. You better check in on him, sir. He won't answer me or nothing. Please Stop. continue. Go on, please. You accept all responsibility? The responsibility is mine. Correct. Please go on. Brave, woman, soldier, dog, horse. Answer is woman. 450 volts. That's it. Now continue using the last switch on the board, please. The 450 switch for each wrong answer. Continue, please. I not get no answer. Please continue. The next word is white. Don't you think you should look in on him, please? Not once we've started the experiment. But what if something's happened to him and had an attack or something there? The experiment requires that we continue. Go on, please. Don't, it, don't the man's health mean anything? Whether the learner likes it or not, we but must... But he might be dead in there. I mean, some people can't take this shock, sir. Please I mean, continue. I don't tend to be rude, but I mean, I think you should look in on him. Whether I mean, all you gotta do is look at the door. I don't get no answer, no noise, something I think has happened to the gentleman in there, sir. We must continue. Go on, please. You're gonna keep giving, what, 450 volts every shot now? That's correct. Continue. The next word is white. White. 450 volts. Next one is short. Sentence. Movie. Spurt. Time. All right, excuse me, teacher. We'll have to discontinue the experiment. I'd like to uh, ask you a few questions, if I may. How do you feel about that? I feel all right, but I don't like what's happened that I fall in there. He's been howling, and we had to keep giving him shocks. I didn't like that one bit. I mean, he's, he wanted to get out, and he just kept going, kept throwing 450 volts. I didn't like that. He wouldn't even look at on that gentleman. Well, who was actually pushing the switch? I was. But he kept insisting. I told him no, but he said he got to keep going. I told him it's time we stopped when we got up to uh, 195, 210 volts. But why didn't you just stop? He wouldn't let me. I wanted to stop. Many people not knowing much about the experiment claim that subjects who go to the end of the board are sadistic. Nothing could be more foolish as an overall characterization of these persons. The context of their action must always be considered. The individual upon entering the laboratory becomes integrated into a situation that carries its own momentum. The results, as I observe them in the laboratory, are disturbing. They raise the possibility that human nature cannot be counted on to insulate men from brutality and inhumane treatment at the direction of malevolent authority. A substantial proportion of people do what they are told to do, irrespective of the content of the act and without limitations of conscience, so long as they perceive that the command comes from a legitimate authority. If in this study an anonymous experimenter could successfully command adults to subdue a 50-year-old man and force on him painful electric shocks against his protests, one can only wonder what government, with its vastly greater authority and prestige, can command of its subjects. Do you rather stand alone and be right, or follow the group and be wrong? The answer might seem obvious, but the truth just may surprise you. The rules of this game are simple. Over here we've drawn a line, and over here we've drawn three lines. A. B and C. Only one of these three lines is an exact match for the first line. Can you figure out which one it is? Got it? Did you say B? Simple enough, right? Or is it? Try one more round with a different version that we're showing our volunteers. You've got to decide which one of these three straight lines is the same length as this first card. Your choice. It's A. You think it's A? I think so. Okay, go to A. 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 It's A. Definitely A. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I'm going with A. Okay. The answer seems obvious, right? Mm. 
or is it? Take one last look. Are you going with these people who all picked A? Or did you choose to go with B or C? Time's up. Got your pick? Uh, it's A. You're gonna go with the group? Yeah. All right, great. Is that what you picked? Or did you go with another answer? It turns out the answer to this round is C. And while you likely chose C first and stuck with your answer, we also know that some viewers might have felt the peer pressure and switched to A. It's A. I want to ask you something. Did your gut at first tell you that the answer was actually C? Yeah, but everyone was choosing A, so I just felt like I had to pick A too. You felt the pull of the crowd. Yeah. In case you haven't figured it out yet, we'll let you in on a little secret. The first nine people in this line were working for us, and each time we ran the experiment, they were instructed to pick the same wrong answer. A. 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 It's A. Seeing all these people choose A left the last person in line who wasn't in on it with a tough decision to go with their gut or with a group. You're going to go with the group? Yeah. Although not all of the test subjects at the yeah. end of the line fell for it. I think it's C. In spite of what everybody else thinks, you don't trust the wisdom of the crowd? Uh, I'm trusting my gut. Okay. To be perfectly honest, I think C looks closest. And you think that they're all wrong? Yeah. Okay. Hi, guys. <laughs> and don't beat yourself up if you were tempted to go along with the crowd. Make your choice. I'm gonna have to go with A. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. What happened? I have a confession. Okay. I, I actually thought it was C. So. Did you start to question your own judgment? I did. I don't want to be the dumb kid. I don't want to stand out. You know, I was like, A. Have you ever ignored the truth to fit in with a group? Just think, what if those weren't lines? But evidence in a murder case, would you be able to see past the group consensus and just go with your gut? Studies show that when someone holds a different opinion than the rest of the group, the anterior cingulate cortex, also known as the oops area of the brain, produces an error signal. We try to fix that by modifying our opinion to be in line with the group, even if it's a viewpoint we're uncomfortable with or know is wrong. The subject denies the evidence of his own eyes and yields to group influence. Ash found subjects went along with the group on 37% of the critical trials. Only one of the people in the group is a real subject, the fifth person with the white t-shirt. The others are confederates of the experimenter and have been told to give wrong answers on some of the trials. They must be right. There are four of them and one of me. One. This subject's yielding is based on a distortion of his judgment. He genuinely believes that the group is correct. Sometimes we go along with the group because what they say convinces us they are right. This is called informational conformity. But sometimes we conform because we are apprehensive that the group will disapprove if we are deviant. This is called normative conformity. The strength of the normative factor is shown in another variation carried out by Ash. In this variation, the subject is told that because he had arrived late, he would have to write his answers. Subjects in this private response experiment are exposed to the same amount of misleading information as other subjects, but they are immune from any possible criticism by the group. One. 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 And this enormously reduces the pressure to conform. Conformity drops by two-thirds. Ash's experiment is a classic. It reveals how people will deny what they see and submit to group pressure. It allows us not only to observe conformity, but to study the conditions that increase or reduce its occurrence.